Computers keep changing the world, but their power and safety is limited by their rigid design. The T2 Tile project works for bigger and safer computing using Living Systems principles. Follow our progress here on T Tuesday Updates. This is the 41st T Tuesday update. Let's get into it. Uh, last time was the big 40th episode when we were supposed to have a ring lotus running on the wall, 100 tiles running on the wall, didn't get close. Uh, uh, since then, uh, I've done uh, propaganda stuff, talk about it, uh, some hardware stuff and some software stuff. Uh, uh, coming up, uh, there's going to be one more T Tuesday update next week before we head off to the Artificial Life 2019 conference in Newcastle upon Tyne in uh, the UK. So, uh, pretty much whatever we're going to take uh, to uh, the A Live conference is going to be happening this week and the early part of next week. So, that's what's coming up. Let's see where we got this week. On the propaganda division, uh, yeah, there's the uh, we. I got invited to this thing. So I'm not sure I mentioned it. Uh, there's a, a a podcast by a guy named Steve Krause, I guess, uh, who called the future of coding. Uh, has this uh, uh, Slack. Uh, room in it as well that I joined up that I got invited to had a bunch of good conversations there uh, other folks from the T2 tile project uh, Andrew Walpole and uh, AJ Zaff uh, have shown up uh, in the future of coding as well and are starting to chat with folks and it's really great it's uh, this this conversation I had with Andreas S uh, you know it was it was really good it was it was the same kind of thing in the sense of the podcast with Tom Barbalet the other week where you know people are just asking what are sort of the obvious questions coming from a more or less traditional uh, computing background and so uh, you know so Andreas S says you know if you're going to send a message from China to Africa you have to go tile to tile tile the whole way and the answer is yeah absolutely you do uh, uh, and there's a reason for it and so on uh it makes totally makes sense andreas says quite a bit of work quite a paradigm shift yeah indeed so that felt good uh i mean it, it all takes time out of the day but this seems like there's been sort of an increasing amount of uh, uh interest and awareness uh gradually getting out cast the bread upon the water uh, um and uh so some of that's coming back, and that seems like a worth, worthy use of time. So that happened. Uh, um, various uh, uh, other folks, and, and again, the whole point is you, th these are all public conversations. So uh, other folks, someone was chipping in with uh, giving a little light bulb sort of aha thing, you know, the robust first slogan, delay universality, which was from last week's glass sandwich rant. Uh, uh, so it was just on my mind, and naturally it popped up. Now, um, also, uh, the, uh, there's been some uh, renovations in the Gitter. Uh, uh, instead of everybody sitting in the T2 tile lobby the whole time, that we now have a profusion of rooms, one about splat, one about 3D printing, uh, software department, and so forth. Uh, um, and, and conversations are going on in a bunch of these, and it's very exciting. It's, it's like home improvements. Uh, uh, I mean, the flip side of it, of course, is now the uh, <laughs> the lobby <laughs> it's like bam everybody vanished from the lobby and nothing's happened there in most of the week it's fine uh, uh the you know growing adjustments is is a great problem to have and, and this isn't even a problem so that's in the propaganda division oh uh, and one other thing <sighs> some statistics from the t2 tile project we, we got our first dislike uh this so these statistics are from since last october which is essentially when the channel began 959 likes one dislike see if you can guess which one which video got it uh, um i always sort of feel good when i finally get a dislike on my other channel on the dave ackley channel it took a long time too i'm not sure you know but certainly hundreds and hundreds of likes before the first uh dislike and to me the fact that i finally get dislikes suggests that i'm actually getting a little traction out there and maybe like youtube is being willing to like put my videos up next to other things so that somebody might click on it who isn't sort of pre-sold isn't already in the bag uh isn't preaching to the converted uh, um and therefore they're going to look at it and eventually someone's going to say oh, this isn't what I was interested in and boom uh, there we go so uh, that's what's happened here when I was looking at this there was one other weird thing uh, on my likes and dislikes 
on January, February, March, on April 5th, uh, I, I had negative 26 likes. Uh, I don't know exactly what that's about. I assume it's about YouTube scrubbing fake people or whatever it is what they do. So that's a little bit more in the pushing stuff out in the world. So did you get, make your bet about which, which video got the dislike? Uh, uh, Dick Vienna. Uh, makes me wonder if perhaps somebody from the sort of startup entrepreneurial business community managed to find the, this thing uh, uh, and was, you know, taken aback to say the least that it was no less in the traditional sort of business exuberance uh, model and maybe that's where the dislike came from. Who knows? Somebody may have fell asleep on the keyboard. So that's the propaganda division. Moving on. Hardware, uh, right, we've got two topics. Uh, the power injector production, now we talked about this. Uh, we got the, the regular uh, inner tile connectors. These share power and data. We've got the ones that just share data but don't share power so that we can divide the whole grid into this is powered by one power supply, this is powered by another supply, this is powered by yet another power supply. We still have to get the power in there and that's what the PIs, the power injectors are for. Ordered some more boards from Osh Park. They came this past week and uh, so I built, here they are. Uh, I got I got a 21 or something like that because they sell in groups of three. Uh, um, and so you know, this is a bad picture, but you know the, the, this basically looks like all the other connectors as far as the circuit board goes, except it's got these two holes in the middle, which is where the big, pretty heavy cables from the power supply go in and then distribute out to the uh, both sides. So the, the connector actually goes between two and, and uh, does its job that way. So here it is uh, with the wire. This is under the microscope where I've managed to get the red and the black through the holes and got them soldered down. Uh, I then uh, clipped off the excess on the bottom because we've got a plastic strap that needs to go right across that stuff between these two U-shaped holes to become part of the handle for removing the thing. So I wanted to get the solder as, as down as far as I could. Uh, I stuck it in the third hand so that it could just be sort of all pushed down on the bench so that I could solder these things a little easier. Got them all soldered up. It's got flux rosin all over the place, but it cleaned up pretty well. A and so now the goal is to get one of the, the handles on it, the tabs, uh, and here are the pieces. It's a four-piece unit to make a power injector handle. And step one is to get this uh, uh, strap up through the thing, coming up through the bottom, and that's when, uh, no slight problem, there's no way that this thing was going to go through uh, that gap. Uh, it's some combination of printing. Maybe I was printing at a slightly thicker layer height, so it rounded off differently. But I think mostly it's the Osh Park routing uh, is is a little bit narrower than what I saw with the other ones. Not sure, but I, I went at it with a nail file and, and filed the board back. I also filed the, the plastic strap back a little bit, and eventually, it was a squeeze, I managed to get it through. And <clears throat> so the idea is that once you get it through, you push it up there, and it provides two hooks for the next piece, uh, the, the shell of the piece to fit onto, and the shell has got a nice little snake in it to provide provide stress relief for the cable so you fit the cable through the S curve uh, uh, like there we go and uh, then we've got a cover uh, that goes on uh, well oh I, I, I took the opportunity since I was assembling this to put a piece of shrink tubing at the point where the uh, uh, cable comes out of the handle so give it a little bit more uh, strength there so there, so here's the next piece that goes on top. It's got little uh, buttons and indentations to help push the, the latches from the strap coming up as well as the S curve down. Uh, uh, and there it is. And then finally the fourth piece comes, which is this cover that slides over the whole thing and slides 
on down and and then right here that little bump right there that's a new uh addition that i put on just in the most recent revision of this thing to help latch this cover thing once it's slid down so it doesn't come loose and come off and there it is so uh, a completed guy and, and that all seemed to work fine it's it's actually running on the powering the grid that i've got in front of me right now uh, uh so i went back to the printer to print up a bunch more shells uh there's actually a little bit of foreboding here if you're a print uh, 3d printing person you see these these uh, rims here and here are kind of pulling up a little bit from the bed uh, uh, it turns out not to affect the performance of these things I went ahead and used them but it was a foreshadowing uh, uh, and here they were so this is after I, I finally got a little bit of a rhythm going uh, the first one took you know most of an hour but the last couple I did half a dozen took maybe 15 minutes each uh, uh, and I, I hooked them all up with tabs and and here they are so we've got uh, a half a dozen of these things now uh, ready to go actually I have two of them deployed uh, uh, but uh, it's in pretty good shape got to do maybe two more sets like this and that will be enough for the not just the ring lotus but all of the tiles that we managed to put together which we still don't know how much it's going to be but we hope it's going to be like over 150 uh, um, Right, so there were the pieces that I mounted on here that you've already seen, and same thing as before. <sighs> but another problem, uh, you, you saw these before. These were the, the bases for the, uh, uh, you know, these things for the feet on the T2 tiles to go in. It was a prototype for seeing how we could maybe mount these things uh, onto acrylic base or something like that to make it easier to handle. Uh, uh, but as was as I was warned by Andrew Walpole, my my resident helped me out with the 3D printing guy. Uh, uh, these female feet that were supposed to be joined up uh, with the male feet that came uh, that are now on the tiles uh, are printed vertically, which means the layers are going this way, which means they break quite easily across the layers, and you can see this happening already. So that one's busted off that one's busted off i think there's a piece busted yeah piece busted off of this one and so forth now it can handle a fair number of little pieces of it coming off and still hold the thing together but it's really a problem and andrew and joby uh sort of got together with the idea that we could keep i could keep using these round feet which are nice because you screw them into the holes and they match up no matter how you do it because it's round uh, uh but still print instead of printing the these things vertically on the printer like this print them horizontally so the open thing goes this way but then it's got to lay on the bed in order to work so it needs at least one flat side in order to lay on the bed so I started trying to design stuff based on suggestions from Andrew and Joby uh, uh, about how to make it sort of a square outside with a circular inside uh, uh, <coughs> I started to realize that, you know, actually programming this stuff directly, OpenSCAD, what I use for this 3D design, is a programming language. And you say thing like circle, cube, ellipse, scale, stretch, you know, stuff like that, uh, uh, which is very clean and you know where you are. And I'm a programmer, so it feels all right. But it feels quite limiting. And finally, this past week, I had an, uh, a tool breakthrough. I learned how to actually import uh, files from Inkscape, the open source vector drawing program which is sort of like a illustrator or something if, if you're coming from closed source land uh, um, and and get it to be you know millimeter accurate so it could be exactly what it is so I designed this thing in Inkscape and brought it into uh, uh, OpenSCAD and extruded it into 3d and modified it and so forth and it's a new workflow for me I like it uh, um, so so and and here is an example uh, it's square but the end down here is is where the male foot would go in and it, and it sort of clips on and it gets it the idea was that we had another clip sort of like a a uh, uh, clothesline, clothespin that would go through a, a sheet of acrylic and and my goal was to be able to drill round holes in the acrylic and put, put this thing in and pop it in so that it would then be rigid and round holes are convenient because I can drill round holes with a drill press so these things you can sort of see it that these things which are meant to be the clips that go through the board are trying to be rounded off this caused all kinds of trouble for me in part because I'm having problems with this f filament pulling away from the bed 
something I don't completely understand because I'm not really that great at 3D printing. <coughs> um, here's another view of it with uh, with one of the male feet uh, in it. And it's pretty satisfying. It snaps in and so forth. And most of them, at least when they print well or they've been broken in a little bit, they'll, they'll spin They'll spin fine. You know, you, you can... Uh, uh, I guess I don't have an example here at the moment, uh, uh, but they're actually, you know, click and then it's loose, so it, it's not actually stressing the female side when it goes. Uh, pretty nice. Uh, uh, but I was having uh, more and more problems coming off of the bed. And, you know, so as I started to think about redesigning this thing, and I said, well, you know, maybe maybe I don't need to do a round hole thing. Maybe I could do a square hole, and I could hire someone to do acrylic for me or whatever. But I realized that I could make the thing sort of wilder shapes. I mean, I was sort of doing things that were basically straight lines and, and roundish shapes, even though I was in Inkscape where I have full-on splines and so forth. So I started cutting loose, and, and it was really quite a bit of fun. Uh, so here's the next version that now the part that was going to go through the the acrylic is no longer trying to be rounded it's expecting to be going into a square hole and it's got a nice swirl in it there's another angle on it here's a pair of them coming off uh the printer don't they look nice it's kind of looks, looks like music or something like that so I, I i enjoyed that uh uh having that additional capability to do you know essentially not really hand drawn but much more flexible shapes and i know people coming from uh fusion 360 are going oh my god this is the first time you've done this <laughs> step by step open source doing what i can uh, uh i finally realized that just like these guys were i was always ending up with pairs of holes because the two tiles that want to be joined are always have pairs of holes next to them that i could do it as a single piece instead of having two separate ones i could have uh, a unit of two and then i could have that just attached and that gave me a lot more room to use the legs in the final version i've been getting rid of the legs entirely and thinking about uh um, gluing things down again. I'll talk about that a little bit when I could come around to try it. I've got an idea uh, how to maybe actually do it in a way that's sort of not too much work and doable and maybe will not require getting the measurements too exactly up front and then spending a bunch of money for someone to laser cut acrylic. We'll see. So there's an example of one coming, uh, one of the pairs coming off. Here's a cutaway version that <laughs> that's not actually cutaway. It's just in the middle of being printed where you can see the, uh, uh, this part right here is the main part of the snap. Uh, uh, and there's a secondary one, but really this is the one that, that counts and so forth. Uh, again, having issues with pulling away from the print bed. So I've done a bunch more uh, and I've sort of added extra stuff to help stick it down like that it's still pulling away i'm not entirely sure what's going on but at this point most of the pulling away doesn't actually affect the functionality it seems okay so i'm going with it uh, uh Andrew Walpole also convinced me to buy a, a new 3D printer, uh, uh, which I did not realize I was going to have to assemble this far. That's an adventure for the future. Uh, uh, that's it for hardware. And so we're almost out of time, so I'm really not going to be able to tell the, the software story. So I'm just going to cut to the chase, which is... Uh, you know, the goal is to get intertile events happening where, you know, an atom uh, running on this side does something, makes some changes, and those changes appear on a, an adjacent tile, and it can go from there. Uh, uh, and in order to have an intertile event, we have to do two things. Number one, we have to be able to negotiate whose turn it is, who gets to have an event here, because we, we try hard as possible to have the effects of a single event be consistent with what the person that made the event expected. Uh, um, so that requires locks. And so there's locking and then there's sending cache updates to notify what happened. The stuff that we were to talked about a little bit before was about the cache updates. This time I was working on the locking. Uh, uh, the locking code was, was very old. I, I refreshed my brain, tried to figure out what it was. And it was like, oh my God, it's... <laughs> It's like taking, you know, the lock is the innermost loop. This is meant to be as fast as we can possibly make it, even though it's going between one tile and, and one or two or three other tiles. Uh, um, 
and the code I had was incredibly slow. Uh, I got it down to 44 milliseconds each, which is still incredibly slow, but it was faster than the 300 milliseconds that it was to begin with. And I started a saga of trying to figure out what it was. So when I got it down to six megahertz, uh, six mega milliseconds per lock grab attempt, it wasn't actually working. <laughs> <laughs> the locks weren't necessarily completely grabbed by the time I checked and so on. I worked through it a bunch of stuff and eventually I got it down to something like, uh, where is it here? Uh, uh, ba, ba, ba. I got it complete. 148 microseconds to grab the locks. That's not bad. Uh, um, it'll get worse from there but that was enough to make me feel like there's a chance that where and that's not pretty bad i mean it's going out of one tile into the kernel in the other tile it's responding going back coming back to the first tile doing a bunch of stuff like that all in 150 microseconds people that do serious optimization this is terrible they could be getting down to double digits in in microseconds if not better but we'll take it all right at a time the next update will be out in a week it always takes longer, but we're making progress. Have a good week.